Hyperglycemia is essentially blood glucose levels or blood sugar levels in the body which are too high. Why does it occur? It occurs for a variety of different reasons. The most common cause of high blood sugars are you're not on enough insulin, you're not enough in your, the dose of tablets is incorrect. It could be that there's a mismatch between what people eat and what people, uh, how, what people do and the medication that they take. It could be being ill, it could be any number of different things that cause high blood glucose levels. Some of the signs and symptoms of hyperglycemia, they may feel a bit more tired than usual, they may suddenly feel that their eyes are a bit blurred and they may also feel that they get a headache. If they have high blood glucose levels they can be thirsty quite a lot. The reason they're thirsty is because they're peeing quite a lot and the reason they pee quite a lot is because they're losing lots of glucose in their urine. Uh, it's just the way the, the kidney can't handle the amount of glucose that's going through and you have to pee out lots of glucose and lots of water. And that's, of course, why you also get thrush. I was diagnosed with diabetes type 2 in August 2008. I actually wasn't diagnosed correctly for about 12 months. I had certain issues and it was actually only after I bought a home test kit from Boots that I actually discovered that there was an issue I went back to my uh, doctor's surgery with the results. Unfortunately, by that time, uh, it was a bit too late uh, I, and I had to go straight on to medication to treat uh, my diabetes. All the classic symptoms, uh, thirst, um, having to go to the toilet quite a bit. Um, and the other thing was I actually had thrush uh, and I had that for quite some time. Some people get thrush with high blood glucose levels and because you're peeing a warm into a warm, moist environment with lots of sugar and lots of bugs, which is an environment that the bugs love. So it, it, it's another one of the symptoms. So, and because people are peeing out calories in terms of glucose, people can often lose a bit of weight, especially if their blood glucose is quite high for a long time. So that's why the symptoms of diabetes are weight loss, feeling tired, drinking lots and peeing lots. So the causes of hyperglycemia are multiple. So the most common cause is that well, yeah, there's different causes. So if you have a mismatch between how much you eat and the, the medication that you're taking, either the tablets or the insulin, depending on how you're treated, it could be that you're not very well, it could be that you're taking the tablets at the wrong time, it could be um, you're not on enough medication. So if it, it depends on if it's a transient high blood sugar level or if it's, a lo if, if, if it's persistent. So if it's persistent, then clearly the medication that you're on is not enough for you. But if it's transient, it could just be the mismatch between what you eat and what you do and how much medication you're taking. It could be that you're ill transiently, just having a bit of a cough and a cold increases the levels of various different hormones that are there to keep you well. But in what they do, whilst they keep the body well, they increase your blood sugars uh, and that's another reason for high blood sugars, amount of activity obviously that you're doing if you're, not, if you're used to having a certain activity level and suddenly that changes and you're doing a lot less then you're not burning off as much glucose and therefore your blood sugars will stay high. It's important to understand what it is so if it's a diet related cause then obviously they could probably do with um, going through their um, thoughts in the last 24-48 hours as to perhaps what it was they've eaten, whether they've um, been doing less exercise than normal um, or what it was that perhaps caused the hyperglycemia because often these things are just a simple cause and if that's the case and they've not started any new medication like steroids then it could be that by just looking at their diet they can find out what it is that they, they need to either avoid in future or to have less frequently or less of and that way then they can avoid the hyperglycemia. Before 1993 it was, uh, or before 1997 for people with type 2 diabetes, it was very well recognised that poor diabetes control was associated with the development of complications of diabetes, so eye disease, kidney disease, nerve disease, heart disease and strokes. What nobody knew was whether controlling diabetes made any difference. And there was a very large study which was involving almost five and a half thousand people with newly diagnosed type 2 diabetes, which asked the question, does good diabetes control make a difference to outcomes? And that study was called the United Kingdom Prospective Diabetes Study. And that went on for about seven or eight years and they found that improving overall diabetes control significantly reduced the risk of having heart attacks, strokes, eye disease and all the other complications of diabetes. 
And that's what we now do, is that we aim for good control to from the time that diabetes is first diagnosed to prevent the complications of diabetes, which could happen 10, 15, 20, 30 years later. And that cohort of individuals has been followed for 30 years now. And it's been found that those people who are in the group that were given the best control, the advantages for that good control during the first few years lasts for up to 30 years. So it's important to get good control from the time of diagnosis for at least the first 10 years to maintain the benefit for over 30 years. So that's why we aim for good control for people with diabetes. Patients should really be seeking medical advice from a healthcare professional when either they have had, if they're a type 2 diabetic and they've had blood sugars um, that are in the teens for two or three days, then really they probably ought to be seeking some advice on the telephone as to whether they need to be having an adjustment to any medication. A one-off reading that is high isn't so desperately urgent for a type 2 diabetic as it might be for a type 1. Seeking medical advice. If someone has any of the following they must seek advice from their doctor or nurse. Continuous diarrhea or vomiting. Unable to keep food down for more than four hours. High blood sugar levels with symptoms of illness. Becoming drowsy or confused. So sick day rules in people who've got high blood sugars or if they're unwell, so if you're sick. So that involves testing your blood glucose really very much more frequently, even up to every hour or two hours sometimes, depending on how ill you are. If you've got persistent hyperglycemia, then often, depending on the level, it's above 13 or so often, you're advised to check your either your blood or your urine for what are called ketones, which are these other chemicals in the blood that can be quite harmful and if you have ketone levels at a certain level you're advised to either contact your healthcare professional or actually come into hospital because you can be quite unwell with that. Rest and avoid strenuous exercise to avoid further increasing your blood sugar levels. Um, if you are on insulin then you may have to take much more insulin, you may have to give yourself uh, short acting insulin far more frequently during the day and the dose of that will depend on how much your overall dose of insulin is. If you're unable to eat normally, then you can replace your meals with the following carbohydrates. 400 mils of milk, 150 to 200 mils of non-diet fizzy drink, a 200 mil carton of fruit juice, or one scoop of ice cream. So if you can eat normally, eat normally. If you can't, then as I've just said, that you, you need to make sure that you're drinking lots. You need to make sure, and if, you're, if your blood sugars are reasonably okay, as long as it's sugar-free drinks, or water, that's fine. It is recommended to drink at least two and a half litres or five pints of water or sugar-free fluid to prevent dehydration. The important thing is you must never stop your insulin. That's quite important. If you're not eating and drinking, never stop your insulin. You may need to have other forms of carbohydrate in the forms of fluid, but never stop your insulin.